In this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about some safety concerns as well as some preventive maintenance. Safety concerns, number one, never take apart a power supply. Power supplies are cheap. You're looking at probably less than $20 for a replacement power supply, and there really aren't any changeable parts inside there that you need to mess with, so don't mess with those. Number two, never take apart a monitor. Monitors have a charge in them that can kill you, so always be very wary of those. Don't take monitors apart. Everything else is pretty much free game. When you do take things apart, it's always recommended practice that you have an anti-static mat. Take the pieces, lay them on the anti-static mat, take them apart there. As you remove the pieces out, put them in anti-static bags to keep the static down. A legacy equipment is far more prone to uh, static discharge and, and damage there than what newer parts are, but just a standard practice, make sure that you're very, very careful with that. Always use the anti-static stat wrist strap as well. Again, we saw this in the toolkit section. You've got a resistor that will be there. Put that against your wrist. That's the way that it goes. Connect this either to the chassis of the computer you're working on or, again, pull off the alligator clip and connect it to electrical outlet to the ground there. As part of preventive maintenance, use air, compressed air to clean equipment out. You can also uh, avoid the compressed air if you want to use an air compressor. If you use an air compressor, make sure that the air is 40 pounds per square inch or less. Also make sure that you're taking out the moisture. You don't want the moisture getting inside the machine. These cans work very well. However, they will cool down over time. And as they cool down over time, they're more prone to put out moisture. When the can starts getting cold to the touch, stop using it. Never use it in anything but the upright position as well. Um, the problem with blowing things out is that you're always blowing the dust somewhere. So you've always got to be weary of that. Instead of blowing it out, if you want to use a vacuum, feel free to do that. The vacuum should have a very strong bag so that you're collecting all the particles, HEPA preferred, so that you're getting all of that, particularly if you're working with things like laser printers and toner and other carcinogens. You want to be sure that you're not spreading that around, but actually collecting as much of that as you can. Another safety item that you want to have at your disposal is a UPS. UPSs come in lots of different sizes, lots of different models, and you'll find them different ways. This is a very cheap model, but yet a very good one for a home use or a small office. And the reason that I brought in is because basically they all work essentially the same. What you'll see is that it has surge protection for all the outlets, and it has backup protection for half of them. This particular model is very good because it will also provide protection for your uh, Ethernet jacks as well as phone jacks if you want to use it for that as well. It does have a serial connector down at the bottom. The serial connector allows you to connect it to the computer. If you're going to be without power for a while, it will send a signal up to the computer letting it know that it's safe for it to shut down. Very, very basic operation. We turn these over. You can actually take these apart. You'll find that on the, the outlet, you've got your typical basic three-pronged outlet two prongs for the AC, one for the ground. Just like everything else, it should plug into an isolated ground if possible. Isolated ground outlets are always recognizable by being orange. So you want to plug it into there. That's where it will dump the surge to. If we pull it apart, however, what you'll find is there will be a 12 volt battery in here. This 12 volt battery has only two wires, not three. You've got your positive and you've got your negative there. The third wire is for the ground. It doesn't matter to the battery. The battery doesn't have a ground anyway. To take it apart further, I've got to take the screws out. And it's something you don't want to do on a regular basis. The battery you do want to change on a regular basis. Batteries are usually only good for about two years. Every two years you need to replace those. And a good UPS will start beeping and letting you know well ahead of time when it's time to start thinking about a replacement there. If I pull this apart, it's going to look a lot like spaghetti. And you're going to see I've got my interface card here. This is my serial connector on the side. And what I mostly want you to see is that you've got really just a transformer to convert the power down to 12 volts so that it's able to charge the battery. And then you've got an inverter. The inverter works when it is on battery, converting it from 12 volts back up to 110 volts. As with most things power related, such as the power supply, you don't want to take it apart much further than this. Once you get to this point, it becomes unsafe really to do a whole lot else with it. Most of the time, if it gets to the point where something is wrong with the electronics here, you want to replace the unit as opposed to anything else. The really only serviceable component is the battery. You're looking at $25 for a replacement battery. You're back in business. Keep your equipment safe. Keep yourself safe. And your stuff will last a whole lot longer.